Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Michael sent me a note about a story out of Los Angeles involving golf. And I'll admit, I'm not a golfer. I have played more rounds of putt-putt golf than I have of actual full-size on-a-course golf. But I, I'm familiar with golf. And I can also tell you that this is a problem that's popping up in many different areas, not just golf. But any time that people can game the system, they will. So Matt Hamilton, Ashley on wrote this to the LA Times, Brokers are buying up precious tee times at L.A. City golf courses. Golfers are desperate and outraged. Golfers at the L.A. Municipal Courses have complained for years that it's almost impossible to get a tee time. And many have long suspected that something's going on to screw up the demand and limited supply for those tee times. And somehow somebody was doing something mm, maybe a little bit unfair. So... A man named David Fink, 35-year-old golf teaching pro and L.A. native, this month popped off to his 200,000 followers on Instagram about a booming black market where brokers charge up to $40 as a booking fee to get you a tee time. So there are brokers who are now involved in this. Uh, This man grew up playing on city courses and said one of his uh, fed-up friends went to Griffith Park and asked Saturday morning golfers how they got their tee times. And finally, somebody said, well, there's this guy. You get in touch with him through this messaging app, and he can hook you up with tea times. So Fink showed his viewers a menu of the broker's offerings. Tea times listed by course, including four at Balboa, one at Harding, three at Hanson Dam. This is what he's charging per tea time per person, okay? $30 for non-peak, $40 per tea time. This is literally crazy, and it's unfair. So when the weekend comes around and we want to effing go and play golf, and we can't because the earliest tee time available is 4.30 in the afternoon, now you know why. Apparently everyone knows about it, everyone knows about it, but it's continuing to happen. So the confirmation of long-held suspicions has roiled the L.A. golf world with players clamoring for the city to crack down. And uh, some of the dominant brokers, um, they say, are Koreans selling mostly to fellow Koreans. Um, The controversy is riven with politics and ugliness. Golf has long had an image as a country club sport. and City courses are a vital outlet for those who can't afford private memberships. Uh, One man who grew up playing on L.A. municipal courses said this is a public good. It would be like if someone took over a public swimming pool and said there would be surge pricing. (laughs) And not just that, it's that someone else has inserted themselves into the transaction and they're making a profit. So the brokers are peddling times at courses across Southern California, but golfers feel the problem is most acute in L.A., where city courses uh, offer unrivaled convenience and affordability, typically charging around $35 per person, higher on weekends and holidays, but the fee is the same for non-residents. Slots open up at 6 a.m. for golfing days that are nine days down the road. Every morning in a matter of seconds, The reservations for the prime city courses uh, just disappear. Golfers say that without using a broker, they get tee times primarily through last-minute cancellations or a wait list where there's no guarantees. So after this man's online videos gained traction, the L.A. Department of Recreation and Parks announced an investigation roping in the city attorney's office and the staff at Golf Now, a subsidiary of NBC Sports, next... (laughs) I know people are frustrated, said the spokesperson for the Recreation and Parks Department. At the end of the day, it's not right. It's not fair. They said the city is on top of it, but asked for a little more patience. So I'm not going to get into the rest of the story. It's four pages long as I printed it out, jammed together on my paper. But it boils down to this. There are public golf courses, and you can log on to a site and book a tee time. Except the second the tee times become available, they're gobbled up by somebody else. How are they doing that? Oh, they're probably using bots. They've got programs that can, that can register faster than you can. And uh, apparently the system allows people to register and book the tee times and then sell them. And that's your problem right there. If they were to do something that could impair the ability of the person to get the tee time and then to sell it to somebody else, this would go away. Now, I understand it's a game of cat and mouse or spy versus spy. Choose your, <laughs> choose your paradigm. But... I understand that. And so we've seen problems like this in other arenas. Uh, The best one I can think of is tickets. Tickets. 
So you want to go see a concert, and, and you want to get tickets for a concert. And last year, The Cure, one of my favorite bands, uh, was playing at Pine Knob in Michigan, and they announced it. And they said, here's the deal. We're sick and tired of brokers buying up all our tickets. We're going to do some special thing where you can get tickets, and uh, we're going to see to it that brokers can't get in on this. And they, what they said they were going to do was you would pre-register, and you would send them your information go, I want to pre-register. And then they said, the morning the tickets go on sale, we'll notify you when you can buy tickets. And then you can log on and you can buy up to four tickets. And since we're limiting people to four tickets and a pre-registration, it means that regular people like you can get tickets. So I pre-registered and at 10 o'clock that morning, I got the note saying you can now order tickets. I logged on and they go, here's what's available. And the entire pavilion was sold out, which is all the seats. Then there's seating on the hill, which I don't normally like to do. But, you know, to see a band I really like, I'd do it. I go, fine, I'll take four tickets on the hill. And they go, those aren't available. What else would you like? And I look at the map, and I go, well, it's all you're showing. So, so it says there's tickets on the hill. And by the way, the tickets on the hill aren't assigned. It's just random general admission. Go sit on the grass. It's not like the grass blades are numbered or something. And uh, so it kept saying that they were available, but they weren't. And the pavilion had sold out in like a millisecond. And what had happened was somebody had figured out a way to game that system to pre-register a bunch of fake bots and then buy them all up because those tickets that you had to get that way, which were supposedly non-transferable, were available on scalper sites almost immediately. And that's the scary part. Now, what's weird is there are bands out there that don't sell out. Every now and then, you go to look for tickets and you find a, a, a reseller who's got them really, really expensive and you look and the venue still has them at regular price. So you buy them from the venue, of course, and, you, and at that point you laugh because the reseller put all this money into tickets that might go to waste. Um, you hope they do. But the point simply is that this has been around a long, long time. They try to do all kinds of things to get around this. They go, okay, we're going to make people stand in line and issue wristbands. And next thing you know, somebody's hiring people to stand in line and wear wristbands. So I understand it's happening everywhere. But the sad part is, what they're claiming is happening here, and the allegation is, is that some guy or a group of guys have set up a program with bots that the second tea times can be reserved nine days down the road, their bots go in and register all of them. They just take them all. Then they put word out through their network of people who buy from them and say, hey, we got tea times nine days down the road. Who wants them? And we're going to charge you for that. And so the biggest problem I think they have here that they could very easily solve is that these things are apparently transferable. So I can sign up for a tea time and then sell it to you. And that doesn't seem right, especially for a city course. And so keep in mind, it's a city course. I'm assuming it's paid for and maintained by taxpayer money. And that theoretically should belong to everybody in the sense that anybody who wants to should be able to use it. And when you find out that, oh, you can use a city course, but you got to pay this guy. Why do I get to pay that guy? <laughs> that sounds a lot like business transactions that happened off the books. Oh, I don't know, back east in the old days? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can have your fruit stand here, but you got to pay this guy. <laughs> who's he? Is he the landlord? No, he's the guy who's going to watch over your fruit stand and make sure it doesn't get knocked over when you go inside to, to, to get bags. Well, it didn't get knocked over before. I have a sneaky feeling it will if you don't pay this guy. And so, you know, obviously there's no threats of violence or anything like that, but the point simply here is that if you want to golf at an L.A. City course and you foolishly think that you can log in and just get a tee time, it's not going to happen. And it's not because someone else got the tee time ahead of you who's going to use it. It's that some guy running a bunch of bots on the Internet has figured out how to game the system, get them all, and then he can transfer it to you for money. And so they got to do something about that. The most obvious thing is somehow make them non-transferable. And then, of course, they could limit how many you could get. So if a lot of people want to use this course, perhaps say, well, you can golf at this course once every so often. But once you've logged in and gotten your tee times the appropriate way, you can't do it again for a period of time to give other people an opportunity to try. So, again, I don't golf, especially not in L.A., but, um, and you might say, well, I went to law school out there, but <laughs> I knew guys who did golf. 
<laughs> and it is a big uh, lawyer thing to go golfing, but I just never, never got into it. What can I tell you? It's one of the things I've never done, so that much. So, Michael, thanks for sending it. But brokers are buying up precious tee times at L.A. City golf courses, and golfers are desperate and outraged. They'll have to fix this. I hope they can. But it just reminds me of the problems with the tickets and the concerts. And uh, some of these things are just ongoing. And all they do is they just evolve and move into different fields. Who would have thought it would happen with golf? Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. You won't find reasonable men at the top of tall mountains.